good show. How are you? Oh, sorry, the camera went there. Um, I'm fine, thank you. Hi, everybody. I would like you to meet my uh, colleague, um, reader, and more, uh, Monica Brovinsky. If I can, if I say it correctly, sorry, Monica. That's okay. <laughs> I'm trying. I've I've been struggling over your surname uh, uh, because I'm also dyslectic. But Bordirsky, is that better? Yes, Bordirsky. that was wonderful. <laughs> OK, uh, nice to meet you. Um, the reason why I asked you, would you be interested in doing an interview was because of the uh, House of Shadows. Um, everybody, if you if you're a follower, a follower of mine, a cyber angel, then you know the House of Shadows and you also know that the Shadowlands are coming out and I'm waiting for those to arrive. I haven't arrived that they haven't arrived yet, Monica, but hopefully they will be coming this week. And I know you're doing a launch on the Shadow, um, the Shadow, uh, where is it? I've, 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 I've lost the card now, the Shadowlands. I have everything prepared here. Mm. Here you are, the Shadowlands. That's the that's the, the, the card, everybody, the tarot deck that's coming out. It's colorful, the Shadowlands and it's creepy, creepy spiders. And I've already noticed in your interview, Monica, that the spiders stand for the swords. Is that correct? Uh, well, in a couple of the cards, they um, mean air, the element of air. And so the Nine of Swords in particular has spiders. Um, I think I have bats, four swords and anything associated with the air. OK, well, uh, let, I was going to do the interview on this one and I hope you will come back to do another interview on the Shadowlands. That would be absolutely fantastic. OK, that said, um, what is your definition, Monica, on shadow? Well, thank you for asking about that, because it's a very complex um, set of ideas for me, not just the Jungian idea of the shadow self, which says that um, we have unacknowledged parts of our personality that we're either ashamed of or just don't wish to acknowledge. So we suppress those and then project them onto others. There, so there is a very psychological view of shadow that I have. But also just given my personality, shadows can be all the things that we don't see at the periphery of our vision, um, both in regular daily life and in, metaphysically as well. Um, I've always been a very intuitive person. I kind of grew up that way. Um, I see things perhaps that other folks might not notice in those shadows and also a very lighthearted approach because I grew up at a time when the Adams family and all sorts of monsters <laughs> were very lighthearted. So those shadows don't necessarily mean frightening things. They, they can sometimes be playful things that just lurk in our periphery. So uh, if I understand uh, correctly for the non the the non uh, psychic people the the shadow is our dark side as well not just shadows ghosts perhaps yes I, I think so. I think there's so many definitions of shadow. I think as long as we perhaps don't get into the idea that uh, shadows and darkness are negative, I think, not seeing things necessarily does not make them negative or darkness is not inherently uh, evil as a lot of people would think. There's things to me that are just not readily seen or easy to uh, to see. Or you would say yeah. that unknown, right. Sorry to interrupt you, but it's, it's oh, just that uh, when, a, when a light go, uh, goes on with me, then boom, it starts working. Um, and uh, uh, thank you for that. So um, I can understand it, but I'm just uh, I asked you the question so that the people that are not psychic and are scared of their intuition or their emotions, I think that's what you mean by the dark side and uh, things that you don't know how to get to the, the answer. Yes, yes, very much so. I think there are things that perhaps we prefer not to see. Sometimes there are things we see that we might not have control over. 
Um, and often they are when we talk about shadows, it is pretty much synonymous with a lot of our fears, a fear of the unknown. OK, I, I, I'm, I'm just busy here sorting out some of my favourite cards because I think although they've got a serious side to them, they're so humoristic and not only because of the Adams family, but it just also uh, shows me, I think, a picture of you, your humour of life, the fun of uh, the love of life that you have. That is what comes out to me. Um, in your cards, although they're so very simple, just black and white and very simple. But, you know, uh, um, I know um, I loved photography, um, but my photography is coming back in these cards like it's not 3D, but for 5D, it's deeper. Um, because when you do take black and white pictures in photography, you see the depth much better, um, I think, than with co most colour pictures. Um, the energy of the cards also show fears. Um, um, uh, the fears of, of the, 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 the shape like uh, the moon. I had to think of Pinocchio um, because of the nose because of the nose and somebody's dangling on by a thread. That was my interpretation beside the mask, the uh, uh, hidden answers. Um, what is, why did you make the nose longer of the moon? Um, is that because it's uh, un, uh, unknown information that you have to nose a little bit further? What is your definition or could it be lies? It can be all of those and I think because I'm intensely interested in symbolism and archetypes, um, I try to use the symbols that will leave you to offer your own interpretation. What I was thinking with mask uh, was the standard interpretation of the Lenormand moon is um, about your career and your reputation as in um, in esteem for your work and, and what you do and what you offer professionally. And um, I was thinking of that sort of mask and nose and hanging on because you know that's not an easy thing to do sometimes and we along with the uh, overall symbol meaning which is very standard in Lenormand what I was attempting and I hope I succeeded I don't know I'll let the readers who use it figure that is to offer another layer and to offer the shadow inherent in that card. So along with your reputation and being very popular and, and being successful at your career, we also have to consider authenticity, I think, and whether we're wearing masks and if it's difficult to hold on to that reputation and that it can sometimes feel precarious. So that is why I, I actually interpret it that way. Is that same with the dog? Because the dog here is wearing a mask. It's um, a centipede with a mask. I thought uh, that was cute as well. He's actually a flea. Oh, a flea. Oh, don't so give me the itch. <laughs> he's the flea of the dog wearing a dog mask. And oh, okay. in, in this case, um, the dog in, in Lenormand it speaks to loyalty and being loyal because dogs yeah. are incredibly loyal creatures. So what I'm asking with the shadow in this drawing is what is it you're being loyal to, the dog or the flea? <laughs> uh -huh. Because you should take a look at and question your loyalties, perhaps. So again, the standard dog is loyal, but I'm saying, mm, yes, loyalty is important, but take a close look at what it is you're loyal to. But the flea is loyal to the dog. <laughs> <laughs> of course. The, the dog is the host. <laughs> exactly. And this is where all of those layers come in. <laughs> it's lovely. I love the humour. And also that child, don't be childish and don't be uh, up in, with your head up in the clouds, holding on to your, its head. And the same with the sun, holding on to sunshine and holding on to positivity, I suppose. It's uh, like, it is. There, there would be great balloons. Yeah, and with the child, though, I have to say, honestly, it's also speaking to the positive aspect of children having a higher perspective and um, innocently being able to maybe put their heads above the crowd to, to gain um, that kind of innocent perspective yeah. before we turn into adults. 
um, and also uh, to to remain, you know, um, grounded. Perhaps the sun is speaking about, well, yeah, warmth and happiness and good things, but too much of a good thing can be a bit of a sunburn as well. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, 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 it's just a like quirky way of looking at things, I guess. Thank you very much, you know, um, for explaining the child. Um, it's uh, it, it, what I'd also like about the cards, any cards really, is that one is never wrong because one, with, with but with this and with a couple of other decks, um, they do motivate you. They await, it's like every time you get a new deck, you see a different deck and you interpret differently and when i go and do a reading i listen to what i have to use and boom uh you know you you just um you you just use what's being told and what your intuition is saying what well, of your interpretation is each time is different and each time you see different things and now if i look at the moon for instance it's like snow is falling or something is dwindling little bits of flakes mm -hmm. and then now I, it starts working this is automatically sorry um but then you know like flaking little bits of information um and i can i can talk about cards for yonks until the cows come home and i love the star as well when there is somebody sitting on a star sitting upon a star mm -hmm. i love that thank you uh, i thank you very much for making that deck um so um what motivated you to make this this deck in this way and not colored like the shadowlands yeah i because i work with pen and ink i'm an artist and i enjoy pen and ink drawings and i also enjoyed edward gorey's style and i grew up with a lot of very stark pen and ink drawings um i find you know, it was just conducive to speaking about shadows and being very direct. Um, I love color, don't get me wrong, and I enjoy the use of color very much, but occasionally it gets in the way of the message. And I wanted this deck to be very straightforward. The reason I created the deck in this style, though, was because I've been reading Lenormand cards for quite a long time. I received a deck um, in in the late 70s um, and I'm very much into symbolism and I do teach people too how to understand symbolism as archetypes because I think it's it's an incredible way to access information that transcends language uh, any kind of language barrier that we might have so when we're looking at symbols you're connecting deeply and yes there may be personal interpretation there but we understand that a heart is a universal sign for love yeah. but i found the norman that they was just the symbol without context and when i'm speaking to people sometimes the interpretations are so uh one-dimensional uh that me putting some kind of action with each symbol is asking you to go a little bit deeper and to look at all of the layers and perhaps the good and the shadow side. Lenormand cards um, used to have, or they still do, sorry, a very um, positive, negative, or neutral is the standard. Uh, some cards are, and they read in proximity with one another. And rather than, you know, it's just my personality having a negative or a positive um, interpretation of the card, I wanted you to be able to, in context, see that there is a light and perhaps a more challenging side to each card and each symbol. And I have to tell you honestly, that is not to everyone's liking. Some people enjoy the playfulness and they enjoy the layers, but there are people who read standard Lenormand who find it very frustrating because they just want the symbol. Uh, mm -hmm. In all fairness, that's fine, but I wanted context for the symbols, and that's how that came to be. Well, I enjoy these cards because they're not the standard things. And um, I, I, I started off 45 years ago or longer 
with tarot cards and I got scared of the tarot that's why I moved over to the Lenormand I didn't even know they existed and I, I'm a fan of Lenormand more than tarot but now because Diana Virtue has left such a big hole thank goodness there's more people coming out and making decks and making tarot not so scary but more artistic more uh, deeper like you say layers like if you see I haven't I can't talk about the shadow lands but by the looks of it what I've seen they are also like this but then color but also even more layered than the lenamon you've you've made and right. the enchantment and the Enchanted is also, every time I go back, I see something new and they they force me. It just starts working automatically. Um, the voices in my head or my intuition, it doesn't matter what you call it. I don't like to be put in cabby holes and we can't do without the uh, light and the dark because they are like the yin and the yang, the masculine and the feminine. And I don't know whether you know, but I'm doing also a weekly vlog with a Dutch witch and I've heard, I think you are a witch as well. I thought that is, um, that's where I got the idea from. Is that true? Yes, yes, I am a witch. Hello, hello people, I'm a witch. <laughs> well, you know, I've been called a witch, but uh, I've lived in England, as you know, and you've got the black witch there and you've got the white witch. The black witch is more occult and uh, voodoo and the white witch is the healer and it's a it's a broader thing so you can say aromatherapy a reflexologist and homeopathist can be a witch but they have um, the homeopathist they study and go to university but actually um, they can get they get the recognition but the witches do not or the pagans do not get recognition for who and what they are because they are literally li living the lifestyle of Mother Earth and uh, giving back what they take and they working with natural stuff and the homeopathist go let it uh, I don't know whether it's um, really all home homeopath uh, all uh, natural herbs but I reckon there might be something in the medication from homeopathy. I can't, don't, I, don't kill me, uh, the speaker or the messenger, but I feel there must still be something synthetic uh, if it comes out of a factory. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, like uh, witches, um, and it's, it's really intriguing, the, uh, the flog with the Wendy, the Lutje, uh, the Dutch witch, and um, uh, it, it's it's a way of life. It's 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 also understanding, respecting Mother Earth, working with nature, expressing yourself, and helping and healing others. Mm -hmm. And from well, what yeah. I've seen, uh, the, you gave me a page, and boom, uh, all you said on that page, I just came home. Is what we've been talking about with Wendy. Uh, yeah, for sure. And uh, I, I think in reference to the definitions of, of which, uh, here in Toronto, Canada, things are a, a little different. Uh, we don't uh, generally categorize witches as, as uh, black and white. I mean, some may, um, but there are also Wiccans and uh, Vodun or Voodoo is a religion, uh, a respected religion in African traditional religion. Um, and that's not necessarily um, witchcraft. Uh, there are so many definitions. Witches are also, the term is being used as a feminist term of reclaiming for a word that used to be uh, quite negative. And so uh, a lot of people, myself included, use that term um, very politically. And I think mm -hmm. it's up to each person, their relationship with the earth and healing and I don't really see witches as black or white myself because we're all shades of gray. I think categorizing is dangerous and um, <laughs> for, me, for putting for putting people to, to say that you're a white witch and you're a healer and you only work with the light is denying part of everybody's personality and um, kind of holding yourself above everyone. And, you know, if you want to be uh, a dark witch and work with evil forces, I mean, go right ahead. But, you know, I'm not here to judge your practice. 
but I don't think saying that you're a dark witch and you only work with the dark, well, you're also excluding those parts of you that are, are light. light. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense to me. I think we're all gray and I think we should all be accountable to our own set of values and perhaps not, not judge others, others that way. It, it just makes me a little uncomfortable because people do walk up to me and say, are you a light worker? And I'm, I'm like, well, I'm not really categorizing myself. And they might leave kind of upset because, oh, you're one of those. You work with the dark stuff. And then they just sort of disappear. And I'm going, wow, we got to really check ourselves for our assumptions, I think, of one another. I started a festival uh, that runs every October from the 1st to the 31st called Witch Fest North. And the reason it's north is because I am using that in a reference to the witch fest that began in New York City. Uh, and we are north of there. And I am doing that as an arts and culture festival so that because I also teach at an arts university and I'm an artist. And I think that uh, bringing our stories and our arts to the foreground is a safe point of contact and it builds community and it builds visibility so that we know we're all here. I think in the 80s, there were people who were totally sequestered and um, just minding their own witch business and you weren't allowed to share anything and it was all secretive. And, you know, I just, I'm not that kind of person. I'm always been into inclusivity and diversity. I think that was very damaging. Um, yes. In, in building community. It may yep. have been from their perspective very much about protecting information and uh, indeed your job if you could get fired for being out of the closet, so to speak. I understand, um, I think, a lot of the reasoning there, but you know, there are young people who very much want to know about uh, magic and witchcraft and metaphysics and intuition and divination now who have I'm no word to say that. that metaphysics and quantum yes. physics um and like i had it today somebody said ah oh, i don't believe in that i said well there is something between heaven or uh, another realm heaven let's call it heaven and earth we there are things that we can't see i said D and, the, and it's my niece and she um, she's very intellectual and she's very advanced in other things. Um, but if you if you say quantum physics or uh, mythology, then boom, it hits home. So it's using uh, trying to find the the right phrase so people can understand. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Sorry for, and sorry for oh, interrupting no, you. No worries there. And. Um, I think I was just saying that the festival is bringing community together and we can talk about the larger issues of how do we look after knowledge being passed along? How do we uh, see ourselves in relationship to the larger community? Uh, how do we maybe define or not define ourselves? What makes us witches? Uh, inclusivity and diversity would, would just naturally say that we all have such vast um, backgrounds, cultural backgrounds and points of view, um, but how do we all care about the environment and move forward? We all seem to have kind of an agreement from my experience that we want to look after the earth and make this a better place. Yes. So it's starting those conversations at least and um, divination is, is part of that and art is part of that. To me these things are so interrelated uh there's there's no there's no categorizing these as separate things they're all part of who i am and and part of you know my community yeah well um uh, like you said in the 80s it was still taboo to talk uh talk or, or if you said oh, i can read cards or whatever uh and so i looked for people uh, to feel at home um not because you you were always the odd one out but i'm glad you're also saying um uh about you can't do without light and without day and symbolism and it, we need we um it, it's a community that's exactly what wendy uh, that's the way i think and that's the way i work all my life and that's what wendy says as well um 
That's why we started this, this series, to bring out the consciousness of not judging a book by its cover, but inside. So look inside yourself and try to look inside others. And thank you very much for saying that. And I said 57 because it came up in my head. Uh, 57, uh, what's that book called? Uh, grey, 57 colour, 57, 70, 57 colours of grey. That film. Oh, shades of grey, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shades of grey, shades of grey. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there's millions of shades of grey, let's be real. Yeah, but you know, it, relates, it just, boom, some things come, just come out like that. Okay, um, how did you come, well, this is with, this is again the Shadowlands. I just wanted to know about the elements. How did you, well, in the Lenormand as well, how did you decide what element to take to depict something in a picture, like in the dog or the moon? Uh, why? Well, you've already said that, um, that you, the, the, the loyalty of the dog and um, yeah, you've already explained that. Um, and um, so um, what else um, can I ask? Oh, yes, about the bats, because you get you can buy one of these things or you get them with the, the, uh, the deck, I take it. When you when you buy a deck, you donate a dollar to the bats and we can't do without our bats because they take away the mosquitoes in our gardens. Absolutely. And they're a vital part of our ecosystem. And um, because I used the bat image on the deck, I thought I should give back. To me, everything is kind of reciprocity. And um, I, I used, you know, I just chose, you know, that bat for the front of the deck and um, the back and I thought and that everybody, everybody go to the bat Skype. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it would be nice to give back, uh, especially since bats are facing this uh, fungal disease that uh, is rendering their numbers really low. Um, and part of that, I believe, is because of global warming. We should take responsibility in that. Uh, I think the damage that we've caused as a society to our environment and and uh, try to give back a little bit for research and to the people who can maybe combat that disease that I think honestly we're we've kind of we've done this you know we have to help the environment out of the space we've put it in um, and so I chose bats because of the image on the deck I could have chosen a million other um, you know, people and, and animals and, and things that I'd like to donate to. There's just not enough uh, sometimes out there. So it's good to start where you can. It's good to start yeah. at a grassroots level. Definitely. Definitely. What is your favorite animal? Do you have any pets? Um, I don't really have a favorite and we don't have pets right now because our, our schedules um, are so sporadic that I just feel it wouldn't be fair um, because I'd have to put, you know, any traveling or anything aside. And I'm one of those people who would just, I'm, I'm too, you know, I couldn't put a, a dog into uh, doggy daycare. I know that's ridiculous. Everyone does it, but, I you know, I, I'm I know so you're close to animals. I just either I'm all in or I'm not. Um, but I adore all animals and I'm very fortunate. Uh, we live in a space where while a lot of yards are kind of standard, you know, backyards, ours is a bit on the witchy wild side and we regularly have uh, coyotes and rabbits and raccoons walk through and skunks and uh, uh, squirrels and all kinds of birds, large hawks. Uh, you name it, we've we've had it walk through and kind of hang out in our yard. So I, I feel like even though we're in the city, uh, it's just kind of um, a, a nice space to be. In. We're very fortunate that way. And I love them all equally, which people find odd, but there is no good looking or ugly animal to me. Every little creature is is got its own beauty and I think they're all really important. Okay. And... Um... So uh, is there any, can you lift up any new information, lift up the veil of to new information? Can you let us in on any secrets? Like are, are you designing another deck or anything? Ah, 
Yes, I'm I'm working on a couple actually. Um, I'm working on um, a version of the House of Shadows. Uh, this was the third edition that that you have, and yeah. I'm working on um, one other edition that's going to be a bit of a, a surprise with a slightly larger book and explanation. And I'm also working towards another tarot deck as a follow-up to the Shadowland uh, tarot that I've done. So that's kind of constant with me. There's always something in the works and sketching and looking right. out the window and thinking of things and drawing. <laughs> how, do you, how can you do a follow-up when it's already perfect? <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, thank you for thinking that. Uh, I think yes, there's, how, there's... How can you have a follow-up? On, on a deck like this, I mean, do you have to put extra houses in or a tree? Um, <laughs> I don't know how you can have a follow up. Oh, uh, well, maybe it'll look a little different, might be a slightly larger card, and it might have a more in-depth book explaining how to read by proximity as opposed to the little white book that's currently in there. Well, so that that's handy, a bit of a secret, but I, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Okay, but uh, well, a little larger book would be better because now that you've put your interpretation uh, or given the, your interpretation of the dog, I thought it was a centipede. <laughs> I never stopped to think about the flea. So, you know, I don't want to um, dismantle your work. <laughs> You can see it as a centipede. I think that's the beauty of it. Like, I would never be upset or insulted. You, you need to leave these things wide open to interpretation. And I think that's the beauty of sharing yeah. symbols that way. Because people have told me all of their own individual interpretation. But they work. They work for however you're seeing it and however you're interpreting the mask. Some people might think they're wearing the mask or it's a good thing that that centipede has a mask. It looks like a dog. It's okay. I think that's that's wonderful. <laughs> well, you know, I, I just love this deck. It's, it's even funnier now, but it, um, <laughs> um, and it makes every reader, you are quite right, that that is what makes every reader unique in, it, in their own right. And that's why when you're on YouTube and people see you and you do it your way, that's how you have clients and you, those clients or viewers stick with you. And um, yeah, I just love them. Yeah. Um, for that and I you keep mentioning the humor in it and you know I, I think it's fairly apparent I may have said it but the reason I use humor to look at shadows is um, looking at shadows and fears is uncomfortable for anybody myself included and I think most of us will agree that having a sense of humor about uh, our fears and challenges is a survival mechanism and it is a way yeah to stay positive in difficult times, which at the moment, given COVID-19, is particularly relevant that uh, yes. we are not making light of it or making, um, you know, dismissing or minimizing the severity of the situation, but that we're using humor as a coping mechanism because it is clearly a difficult thing to go through as all fears and challenges are. Uh, I go live like I used to go live seven day uh, seven days a week, and it just got too much for me because uh, I'm I'm doing also other things now. Luckily, an interview with you and with Wendy, the witch's vlog, and um, uh, I'm also a life coach. But I understand you are also a Reiki master and a, a life coach. Uh, and even more, you're a teacher at a university. Where do you get the time from to make decks? Ah, oh, well, um, I, I would love to study Reiki, but I actually haven't. <laughs> I thought that you were a Reiki master. No, actually, I'm, I'm not. Um, I, um, I do energy work, but not Reiki. And um, I do try to coach people and, and mentor them. And that's, that's for sure. And especially in the university setting, um, I teach both drawing to material art and design students as well as a think tank class, which is very much about coming up with uh, sustainable design solutions 
um, and I suppose you would call them green solutions for um, our environment and for the world. Um, I, where do I find the time? I, I just am really enthused about what I do. And I think when you're really motivated, you, the, the time is there. You know, I think some of us tend to, and I've done it before, I, I started doing things that I absolutely adored, procrastinated things that I wasn't that motivated to do. Um, I don't know, I'm just always engaged with the things that I love doing. So it doesn't really, yeah, it can be difficult and I can get exhausted like most people, but it doesn't feel like work. And uh, if you're always doing this and thinking about art and thinking about things, you just are constantly putting one thing after another. They're all in the queue and they just they just follow. So I don't get to do everything I'd love to, that's for sure. <laughs> but I'm having a good time with what I've managed with the festival and I mentor a group of uh, women and one gentleman um, in some metaphysical uh, arts. And uh, I just, I just, must... what is metaphysical arts then? Uh, generally witchcraft. <laughs> oh, sorry, I didn't understand. Oh, so that would include divination. Um, I do talk about herbalism. We do talk about spell casting. We talk about uh, ritual. We read, we learn about the history of um, metaphysics. I mean, it covers very broadly uh, many things because I feel that it's not a traditional witchcraft like Gardnerian or Alexandrian. It is more that I'm trying to have people explore what witchcraft is to them and find their own paths. So it's a very generalized, it's a very broad category. Sounds more like you're um, a life coach, a met metaphysical life coach, that you talk about metaphysics and because the answer lies within you and mm -hmm. that you are motivating them to get the answer from within them. I think absolutely from within and also to understand the context of history um, because there there's a fine line there and this is a discussion that's come up many times with uh, Wiccans that I um, have discussed this with that it is vital to pass on tradition and exact information and on the other hand, there are a lot of people who think that witchcraft is whatever you want it to be. I feel that the answer lies somewhere in between the two and that you should understand historical context and what people do in their practice and what Gardnerian practices are and what those traditions are about, as well as exploring how you see yourself within your own uh, family background within the context of where we are here and now and find your way between the two. I think it is neither doing whatever you feel like and calling it witchcraft personally, although I don't mind if people do that, it doesn't bother me, and nor do I see my practice as um, within a very structured uh, tradition that requires repetition um, by rote. So, you know, I'm trying to share that within my group so generally it's a pretty small group because people have come and gone over 10 years who either want more structure or um, want to do things uh, completely on their own without the baggage I guess they would call it of historical context to each his own. Yeah but uh, that's true um, but the only witch that I see in the Lenamon uh, is this one that's the, oh, yes. that's the broom and I like the way the cat's got the broom in there as well. <laughs> yes. Uh, there, and again, um, uh, the hand. Um, this is just a few symbols or and the, the, I thought um, uh, it wasn't it wasn't pins until I saw it in the book. It was pins. I thought he was dangling, hanging on to, to something, the puppet. So somebody was pulling your strings. That's the uh -huh. first. Time. That's the first time I uh, I uh, I interpreted, and then I read the book, and then um, it said pins. So that's the that's the, the 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 other magic, and then you've got the herbs. I think that that is beautifully depicted as well. 
I, I just, I, you know, there's so magic. You've got not only the Lena Mann in here, you've got the, the magic in here, literally and figuratively speaking. You've got the humour in here. Uh, you, you, you just blow people. You put people, uh, you make people think and listen to their intuition. I think you've got a, a fantastic gift. Oh. Now, the word indig, indig, Indigenous, I, I can't say it, sorry. Oh, indigenous. Indigenous uh, community. Could you explain for our viewers what indigenous is? Ah, well, um, indigenous, and this, this uh, holds for the entire globe, are people who um, are from the space that they originated. Uh, Indigenous people in North America would be First Nations people. And in Europe, uh, there have been so many migrations, it, it would be difficult to pin us to being Indigenous from any one particular space, unless you understand way deep history of um, migration, migratory paths and routes, and where uh, you know, Europeans uh, originated. Uh, if you believe uh, and you are part of the theory that we all originated in Africa, then uh, only people who remained in Africa are indigenous to that, to that area. So here in Canada, we have many First Nations groups. Um, I, you know, have no idea how many particular uh, bands there are of First Nations people there are so many in each province that we have. Um, I'm more familiar with those in Ontario because I worked for uh, a short time in the Native Canadian Centre of Toronto. Um, I was asked to be the history program coordinator there and uh, as a non-Indigenous person. And so um, I was very honoured to learn a fair bit about um, indigenous ways of being within this country and also and unfortunately um, colonization and the damages that colonization have done here for 500 years um, and a lot of those struggles so it certainly gave me a very deep appreciation um, of First Nations people and what it means to be not just standing on this land as many of us as um, you know, settler culture are, but to actually be of this land, meaning that for over 10,000 years, ancestry has gone back into the earth here and come up out of the earth here. Th this, in my, my personal opinion, gives Indigenous people uh, a different relationship to this land. Okay, so um, Indigenous is, I thought, uh, the first the first people would be the Canadian Indians. Ah, uh, yes, or, we just or, don't use or, that terminology. Or, or, yeah. or, do you, or do you mean the first first settlers, the first oh, no. nations of every different culture from oh, every okay. different country? Yeah. Well, let me clarify that because that terminology may be very specific to um, our area, but settler culture is anyone who's come to this country and they are much after. Uh, first Nations were here first. So that is in reference to all of North America and Latin America. Those are all Indigenous people. Uh, settler culture, we are not Indigenous to this land. Um, and we so, don't use term Canadian or Indian because um, First Nations or Native people here are not from India. That was a mistake. And uh, we don't say Canadian necessarily, we, we can. I would leave that up to Indigenous people to define themselves because uh, there was no border between Canada and the US and Latin America. So Indigenous to this entire continent would be more accurate in our minds. Right, so um, the Indigenous people from Europe wouldn't be then the Vikings or the, the Germanic people, Germanic people. Because Hi. in Holland we go back right. to um, either Germany and uh, Sweden where the Vikings come from and if the, yeah, how far do you go back? 
<laughs> that's a very interesting question. And um, I think that's one that causes a great deal of controversy, especially, you know, I don't want to get too political here, <laughs> but when it comes to nationalism, these are definitions and uh, self-identification. And this I would have to leave to each individual because you might take yourself back to calling yourself an indigenous African person, um, you know, and you may call yourself uh, only Dutch. Uh, Dutch and say <laughs> that it, it in depends England, on the language. Are more English. It, it's just a border and a language. Yeah. I personally don't see myself that way because um, I guess I've had a lot of um, different groups of people coming in and out of the family and in my spiritual practice I'm very much into ancestral veneration not worship but veneration meaning honoring ancestors and if I were to choose a border and language I would be excluding yes exactly I would be excluding a great deal of my family and I suspect a lot of other people are I find for me, it, it would be a type of an arrogance that I don't feel comfortable with. I don't feel that my identity ends at any designated border politically, and I don't feel that it ends at any one particular language. That is not my identity. I feel that my identity goes back through many, many ancestors, many generations, and ancestors potentially yes, back to Africa that are going to be forgotten if I stop my uh, honoring of that lineage at the border. I feel like um, I'm so much into inclusivity that doesn't do justice to to all the people in my family who are unnamed and unknown because of the way we haven't been able to keep our own um, oral traditions. Do you know what I mean? Yes. So that I leave More to every individual. Thing, yeah, but I don't. Um, I haven't. Um, uh, yeah, I am Dutch, but we've got Portuguese, a Jew, French, English now, and American in the family. Now, um, and I've lived in England for 28 years, and I was called uh, names like Cheesehead, Go Back, or uh, a Nazi, because in, that was, they were 50 years behind. Uh, go back to your country, we don't like you, we won the war, blah, blah, blah. Um, and you know, um, when I came back to Holland, um, they they looked at you differently as well as if you don't belong here. So right. I said, sorry, uh, I'm Dutch. I'm not neither Dutch, neither English, I'm European. And they just were flabbergasted. So I just take myself for who I am and what I, uh, how I would like to be. I, I've been in, in, uh, in care. I've worked in there 22 years due to uh, circumstances I'm not there anymore so I'm doing it from home now in my own way and I can and I, I've got this gift which my mother had and I'm using it uh, to the good and like the ancestor class I can understand it because you're a third your family your ancestors a third yourself and a third your environment uh, the attitudes the manners that you get from outside the house exactly exactly we're also excluding something really important if we're trying to rely, and that again is my personal opinion, and I respect anyone else as long as they're not bullying anyone, however they identify, but also we're excluding this idea, and it's true, that if you're adopted into a family who happens to be outside of your ethnicity, you know, does that mean you're not allowed to um, see those people as as family or ancestors. I mean, the definitions get really sticky here, and I think it's best that people are just educated about where we may have all originated and um, make their decisions from there. Uh, critical thought is important here. If you've looked at everything and you decide you want to be only Dutch and live within the borders and only speak Dutch, that's perfectly fine as long as that's not a choice that's done out of fear or ignorance of other cultures. Uh, and that's the same with, with being from Canada. If you want to say you're only Canadian, uh, fine. But understand that there's so many layers and levels to that 
before you make that choice is what I would encourage with people, as you have done, as I've done, and a lot of people I know have who are choosing to break down barriers by um, also lack of gender identification, breaking down the binary of you are this or this is crucial for us to become more open-minded and communal, I think, and understand one another and develop compassion and empathy for one another yes. beyond those definitions. Yeah. Yeah. And coming back to the cards again, um, sorry, uh, I do um, go back to the cards because I see things on what you say. I see things. Um, life is like, uh, I always say this also in my life, uh, life is like a facet, a diamond, an unsharpened um, un, um, or cut diamond. And here you are, you've got the diamond and e you've even taken the trouble to make facets on the diamond and your life is finished when you, it goes in the setting and together we stand strong. And that is such an awesome message. I think it's so lovely uh, done. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. You've been very complimentary about the cards. I'm very happy that you are enjoying them and reading with them. And um, I've enjoyed your interpretation of them. When you're creating art, sometimes you're creating in a bit of a vacuum and you don't know. It can feel very risky to put yourself out there. Um, and it's very nice to hear feedback that you're enjoying the cards, you're interpreting them, you're working with them. And I hope that everybody can take that as an example, um, that you can play with them, you can find your own way with them. And um, I want to thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome. And I hope uh, as soon as I get the shadow lands, I'll let you know. And I hope I'll be there in October um, and to join the festivities. Sounds wonderful. Thank you, Cher. Uh, because I want to thank you, uh, Monica, and I would love to meet Brenda. I understand you've already spoken to her. So I'm going to uh, close, shut down now uh, or to switch off the video. Thank you very much for your time. May the universe and the energy of the universe and from me um, that I'm sending to you for good luck and health and happiness in this difficult time. Uh, May they may you be blessed. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shara.